So Powell knows before he has a recession or a depression, which is what it really would be, he needs to keep asset bubbles growing and he needs to eat, keep the economy, uh, the rate of GDP to increase. He needs that to happen. Because, you know, when you think about it, having a recession when asset prices are a little bit above where they should be historically, it's not such a big deal. And when debt levels aren't so extreme. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, hey, we're just barely past the first day, the first week of April's of April uh 2024 it's already hitting the fan gold trading at all time highs well inflation according to janet yellen is going back under two percent this year and she's betting her job on it i guess not uh, that it does you much good michael pento pentoport.com is here with us questions comments kl at carrylutz.com write your comments below so michael state of the disunion here inflation it's going below 2%. Yeah, based on what? Uh, so for the past nine months, it's, it's been stuck in the low threes. So I, I don't know what gives Janet Yellow the confidence is going to 2%. Um, I think the only way it's going to 2% and below is if we have a recession slash depression. That, and that's a real possibility. I don't think she's going to like that outcome. <laughs> but if not, if you look at the soaring price of commodities, if you look at the real measurement or yardstick for the dollar, which is against real money or gold or even hard assets like commodities, it's tanking. It gets an F grade. Maybe not against the, maybe it's not tanking against the euro or the yen or the pound, but it certainly isn't tanking against real and honest money, which is gold. So inflation isn't going anywhere near 2% for quite some time, unless we have the economy fall off a cliff, which I think is a very real spot possibility. They seem uh, hell bent on making that happen, don't they? <laughs> it would it would appear so, Kerry. All right, so so gold, even at these uh, highly, well, some might refer to them as inflated prices. I'm sure you can see the headlines. Experts surprised by gold and silver's recent strength, right? These experts who get everything wrong. Yeah. Well, you know, no one knows better what's happening with fiat currencies than central bankers around the world. And they know what they're doing. The only way they could possibly survive uh, or make their economies look solvent is to print money in massive quantities to buy sovereign debt. That's what Japan's doing. Uh, that's what the United States is doing. And I think that's gonna increase in, in uh, size and in quantity. So central bankers around the world are buying gold with reckless abandon. Mm -hmm. Not only because they, they know what they're doing to their currencies, but because they don't trust the United States uh, reserve system. So they don't trust our dollar and they don't trust our bond market any longer. I mean, especially that's the case when the United States could just say, you know, unilaterally, um, your reserves are cut off. You, you, you no longer have access to your, your uh, currency reserves, which are dollars and in, in, in sovereign debt. So it makes a lot more sense for them just to buy gold. And they they hold the gold and you know they they sell an excess of goods to the United States, right? They have excess dollars. They usually would park them in treasuries, but instead of doing that, they go, hmm, let me just sell my dollars and buy some gold. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they obviate the problem of being, you know, a victim of US dollar hegemony. Then you add to that the fact that real interest rates, nominal rates are rising, if you've noticed. Uh, but real interest rates are falling because Mr. Powell is hell-bent on cutting interest rates this year. Now, why, Kerry, why would he do that? Why would he do that when you could, I, mean, I assume he looks at a chart of the CRB index, and it's just going up and to the right like a rocket ship. So why would he do that? Why would he be cutting rates when inflation has been staying higher than 50% north of his target for nine months? Why would he do that? And I think he's panicked because he knows that America cannot issue debt north of 5% and remain solvent. He just can't do it. And corporate America 
with 40, 45% of the Russell 2000 being uh, uh, held in companies that have no profits, make no, have no earnings, they have to issue debt constantly. And they used to issue it at very low interest rates, close to zero. And now it's, you know, 8% for high yield debt, depending on the, 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 the credit quality of the borrower. So Powell knows before he has a recession or a depression, which is what it really would be, he needs to keep asset bubbles growing and he needs to eat, keep the economy, uh, the rate of GDP to increase. He needs that to happen. Because, you know, when you think about it, having a recession when asset prices are a little bit above where they should be historically, it's not such a big deal. And when debt levels aren't so extreme, that's just a big deal. But when you have a recession, when asset prices, stock and real estate prices are 50% above where they normally are historically, the ratio of total market cap to GDP is 50% above where it should be, historically speaking. The ratio of home prices to median family incomes is 50% above where it usually is historically. So if you have a recession, it could quickly become a depression, Terry. Can you imagine what the banking system would look like if home prices and stock prices went down 50%? I mean, this is, I'm not making up numbers. I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic. I mean, if you have the home price to income ratio now is 5.5, it was 2.8 in the year 2000. Total market cap of equities to GDP is 188%. It should be 100% or even slightly less than that if you go back to where it was in the 80s and 90s before we had the ZERP, you know, this, the ZERP regime of ZERP, zero yeah, interest rate policy. So if, the, so if asset prices were to crash by 50%, what condition would the banking sector be in? What condition would the consumer be in? It wouldn't be a recession, it would be a depression. And that is why Powell is hell-bent and panicking to get interest rates down, even though he's going to be cutting rates when he's nowhere near his inflation target. That's a scary, a scary proposition. And uh, so what about the dollar? How, how much longer can the dollar uh, exist in this situation? Well, Kerry, like I said before, if you're measuring... In measuring the dollar against the euro, I mean, quite a long time. Look, it looks, it looks, fi it looks fine. Yeah. I mean, it might, might only, might only get hurt on the margins. Um, I mean, how much is the dollar going to collapse against the yen? They can't. These, that, that retirement island can't even hardly get off zero. I mean, they just got off negative interest rates. <laughs> yeah. We're at five and a quarter. To, we, look, we look, we look great. So against the yen and the euro, maybe not so bad. Um. But measure the dollar against measure the dollar against oil, Kerry. Hmm. Measure the dollar against gold and even silver. Hey. Measure that. Measure that and tell me how you think it's doing. It, it, measure it, it against collapsing. measure it against a latte from uh, our least favorite uh, uh, right uh, left wing uh, coffee purveyor. Yeah. You know, yeah. Starbucks. Uh, Look, my listen. yeah, my uh, latte uh, has doubled in price in the past like three or four years and they cut back on their uh customer disloyalty program uh and i and i think sometimes you order a latte and you're like you know i i order the medium and it's half filled with cream yeah. and then you know and then a quarter is coffee <laughs> that's my new site the inflation inflation dot cafe <laughs> <laughs> well you know what you know what the sad part is carrie that 78 percent is a poll that came out not too long ago by forbes in 2023, 78%, that's a lot of Americans, are living mm. paycheck to paycheck. That's frightening. Because of the inflation that has been wrought against them by the very people who proclaim that they're for the middle class. They're the doing this. Guy. We're, we're, we're doing this for full employment. We need to Families. have full employment. We need to have stable prices, which sometimes means 0% inflation, and then it became 2% inflation, and then it became 9% inflation. <laughs> and now it's 3% inflation, but hey, you know what? 
3% inflation isn't so bad. We can't really get to two. Let's just, let's just talk about cutting interest rates now when inflation is still 50% above the target. And here's the thing that the, I think these G, there's 400 PhD economists that work at the Federal Reserve. 400. Is that all? Yeah, I, I think there's 400. P I wonder, P I was looking to hire one and I couldn't find any. Now I know I, they're all at the Fed uh, disrupting things. Well, you, well, you know, you better go. You you're better off going to kindergarten and getting a, um, you know, uh, a kindergartner to to run your uh, e economic models. Because here's the thing that I think they're going to be most surprised about: what if the Federal Reserve starts cutting interest rates, the Fed funds rate? That's the rate they control. They don't control long term rates, and long term rates soar because inflation becomes intractable. That's a salient and viable risk. And if that's the case, they will not provide any salve for anything if that's if that happens. Mm -hmm. You think that's you think that's a, a viable uh, option here? I mean, is that is that really going to happen where they cut the rates and then rates go up? Well, I, I mean, it, it, let's just let's just normally Speaking, historically speaking, the 10-year Treasury note trades commensurately with uh, inflation plus real GDP growth. So if inflation's at 3%, and let's just say real GDP growth's around 2 3%, Atlanta Fed has it at 2 .5. That's 5 .5%. The 10-year note is nowhere near 5 .5 right now. What if in an environment of a soft landing, supposedly, purportedly so, the Fed start to slash interest rates. What do you think is going to happen with commodity prices? What's, what do you think is going to happen with the dollar? They're going to crash, right? Right. The dollar would crash, money right. prices would soar. Sure. And is, is that going to be good for inflation or bad for inflation? I, I think yeah. it's going to be pretty bad for inflation. So if the rate of inflation goes up, so if you have real GDP at 2%, 3%, plus inflation at 4 5 6 7%, what the hell... Or why in God's good name would anybody buy a 10-year note yielding 4.5%? It doesn't make any sense to me. Especially when the Fed has, you know, at least tacitly admitted to you that they can never control inflation without destroying the economy. Mm -hmm. So so they're stuck, in other words, right? Yeah, I, I think they're I think they're stuck. I, I think they're in a I think they're in a dilemma of epic proportions because if they do nothing and keep in, interest rates where they are already, well, you know, we just had the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index come out. That has shrunk for 27 months in a row. 27 months in a row. Um, uh, household net interest income has plunged by $200 billion in this current Fed tightening cycle. That's because, you know, back in, back in the 2006, the Fed raised rates, but it was an in aggregate households gained income because they have, you know, their interest income went up. But now we have a lot more percentage of debt, household debt, that's in a variable rate environment. Personal loans, um, credit card debt, you know, revolving debt. So net interest income has plunged. Uh, we have a near perfect recession indicator. It's called the yield curve. It's yep. been inverted for a record amount of time. Positive real interest rates that have existed for about a, almost a year now. When that when that is the case, when you have real a real Fed funds rate, so the Fed funds rate is five and a quarter to five and a half. The effective Fed funds rate is five point three, subtracted by inflation, it's around two percent. Whenever you get that, for about a year, the economy has tended to melt it melt down in the past. Powell knows all this. Oh, we have, yeah. We've had the most corporate defaults. In Q1 in 2024, since the global financial crisis. Wow. Uh, uh, auto loan and credit card defaults are soaring. Uh, the, the consumer, oh, you know, not only the consumer the, and the corporation, they can't handle these interest rates, but you know what? The government can't handle these interest rates either. Imagine paying $2 trillion a year on interest. That's crazy. So they have to monetize the debt, right? They're going to be monetizing, which is basically QE, right? Uh, it's not. It's exactly what it is. 
That's exactly what it is. How much how much debt can they buy before the the game blows up? I guess they can buy the debt and uh, basically quarantine it, right? Uh, basically sterilize the money, make the banks keep it on deposit with the Fed, right? So then the money doesn't get unleashed. Yeah, but you know what happened? You know that that's a that's a possibility. But what's going to happen with the currency if they do that? I mean, I I can't see the Fed's balance sheet going back to nine trillion and higher without destroying the purchasing power of the middle class, which is already on life support. I just can't see it happening. Mm -hmm. They could they could try to do that. That that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But but you know if they create all this inflation, you know they give all these bank the banks have these reserves. I, I mean. I, I, we could be another. We could be Japan. We could turn into Japan. Um, but is that is that really your our model that we want to pursue? Is that is that the model we want to follow? And it, is the is the Fed going to buy? Um, is the Fed going to buy corporate debt too? Are they going to buy mortgage backed securities too? I mean, are they going to buy everything mm -hmm. on the planet and then pay uh, an enormous amount of interest on on excess reserves? Is that what they're going to do? I guess it's possible. I can. I guess they can do that. But I, I think they can just. They would destroy the the dollar's purchasing power against hard assets. I think that would be a very big outcome, negative outcome. So, so it's not like uh, back in uh, two thousand nine when they just monetized the debt and said everything's fine, right? We're not there. No, you 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 notice that two thousand nine didn't solve anything. I mean, we have we no. have still have rec we have still have record asset bubbles, record mm -hmm. asset bubbles. I mean, what, what right now? As I mentioned, seventy eight percent of of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Who can afford a home anymore? A first, you know, the first the, the market for first time home buyers is gone. Yeah, they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know the Fed has to make some very serious choices coming up. What do they want to do? They, do they want to usurp the market price of assets forever and see if that, see how that works? I mean, we could be in that. We could be. We could become Japan. That's a nation that's been mired in, in growth that's flo floating, you know, around zero for decades. If that's what we want to do. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we see how well that works, right? <clears throat> yeah. You see, you know. Um, the, the whole thing is about hubris and arrogance. I mean, at, at some point, we have to decide to let markets function freely or just have the state take care, take care of everything, control everything. And that is where Japan is right now. They buy, mo they buy almost every single bond issued by the Japanese central bank. Mm -hmm. every, every JGB is bought by the government. And the government owns, I think, about half of all of ETFs. Yeah, issues and outstanding. So if that's what we want to do, that's fine. <laughs> All right. So inflation's going up. Interest rates are going to go up because they're going to cut them and it's going to cause them to go up. Um, so the only safe havens, we're looking at precious metals, right? Well, um, so when you enter sectors four and five and right now we're i believe we're in sector four of my inflation deflation spectrum that's an increase in the rate of inflation and a second derivative basis so you look at energy you look at gold and you look at shorting the bond market and that's where we're you know we're headed towards that sector sector four and five right now we're kind of like i said between three and four which is stasis, which is a stability in the second derivative of inflation. Um, but let's just see what Powell does. Uh, we have a problem coming up around June and July, and that's when the excess reserves from the reverse repo facility run, you know, run dry. Mm -hmm. And that's provided all the liquidity for the bond market and all the liquidity for the stock market. Uh, when that ends, we could have a serious problem with both stocks and bonds bond yields could soar and stock prices could plummet because the liquidity for the, both those assets dries up. So we'll see what his decision is. It's it's up to Powell and the FOMC. It's it, they they are a very powerful institution. I know some people come on 
uh, financial media and say, oh, they're irrelevant. They just, no, they're not irrelevant. They, <laughs> they provide the liquidity. They control the base money supply. They control liquidity for the banking system. And if you think the banking system is irrelevant in the United States, then I, I, I'll disagree with you. So let's see what he does. I mean, I, I think I, my own belief is he'll flirt with reality. And when reality blows up in his face, he'll acquiesce and he'll cut interest rates He'll go back to QE. He'll buy all the government debt. He'll take have the bonds, like you said, taken off the bank's balance sheets and sitting at the Federal Reserve. They'll pay the bank's excess uh, interest on those excess reserves. And you know, all, all this comes down to one thing. The rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. Those that spend 30, 40, 50% of their income on clothing and shelter and food will be move further towards penury and people like us who own multiple houses and have, you know, multimillionaires would just get richer and richer. I, I don't, I, and I, and I don't like, yeah. Do I enjoy being wealthy? Do you enjoy being wealthy? I guess we do. Um, but it, it's just not fair and it's not a viable way to run a country because you just can't have a country run without a middle class, a functioning and viable middle class. Yeah. No, can't we, we see what's happening in China now, right? Um, the country had a more fragile middle class than they thought, and now they've done everything they could to destroy it. And now they're reaping the fruits of their policies, yeah. as every country eventually does, right? Yeah, um, it, it, it's risky for the uh, this country to go down the road of looking more and more like a banana republic in, in their monetary policy, their fiscal policy, and even in the way we transition power from one administration to the next. Um, you know, when you try to influence elections by putting people who are running for office in jail, <laughs> It's, it's, a it's, it's a, it, when you, in other words, and, and I'm a libertarian, I'm not a Republican. So don't, don't take same, the same, same. So I, when you try to usurp the power of the people to decide who they want to be president, that leads to big problems. So when you have political chaos, financial, uh, uh, when you have monetary chaos and you have uh, fiscal chaos, it leads to economic chaos. That's where we are, and that's where we're headed in the, in a more uh, salient fashion. All right. On that note, we will uh, let you go. Michael, I know you have a busy day ahead of you. Hey, questions, comments for Michael, myself, KL, at kerrylutz.com. Write your comments below in the YouTube channel, and make sure you go over to pentoport.com. It's in the show notes of this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. And while you're there, please sign up for our free newsletter. Michael, always a pleasure, even if the uh, the topic is somewhat somber and uh, out and out depressing, you know? Well, it's it, it, unfortunately, you know, what else, what other conclusion can you arrive at if you're an independent thinker? Look around and tell me if you think this is a viable situation. And the answer is sa sadly, no. Absolutely. All right. We appreciate you. We'll talk Thank to you again soon. You be well. Thank you, Carrie. You too.